club sport. 16 teams down. <laughs> Someone take the mic. I'm going to take that away from you, Ben. <laughs> too much caffeine or too much chicken. We don't know yet. Number seven, again going down for Grand Valley, same as the last point off the opening rush. That would be number seven, Sherman, for Grand Valley going down off the opening rush. Careful language, Chips. Did we have some R-rated language from the Chips? We chip did, ones? we did, we did. He missed the throw from his own team. Then he was angry about that, <laughs> so he cursed. Want to remind everyone here as we start the second half that we do have another stream available through my live stream account, JIT Josh Raymer. That will be showing the baseline. Uh, in this half, it will be showing Grand Valley. And this stream will be the front-facing view of Central Michigan. Yeah, a shot clock violation there from Grand Valley, not, not paying attention at this point. That's really surprising out of Grand Valley. Yeah, that's not, that's not normal. We'll try to lean over the railing here and tell you if we get any outs for Grand Valley. Well, there are at least four out for Grand Valley over to the right. One, two, three. Yep, number 28, that would be uh, Connor Klopsik. Klopsik. Something. Something. I, he could go yeah, either way with it. I know. These guys. Gosh. He, he goes down there, number 28 for Grand Valley, off that volley. You know, imagine both of us being in a national championship tournament, commentators coming on our team. They're like, Ben, oh, I can't. Subby Siggy. Whatever. Uh, that was Dylan Fettig going down there, number 24 for Grand Valley, just a few seconds ago. So Central Michigan definitely in control this point. Ben, what are you seeing from the Chippewas that has them controlling this point early? I think they're calling out targets. They're throwing really well at this point uh, of the game. Um, Grand Valley holding on to these balls, so they're getting some ball advantage. Number four, their captain, Grand Valley, who still somehow has an arm. I don't know how, is taking control. He's got two balls at a time for Grand Valley. It's called an arm transplant. <laughs> in the middle of this game, he's, well, throughout the tournament, he's, he's kept it going. But... He is keeping control. Even though there are more than enough players on Grand Valley that can throw the ball, he's, he's having two at a time because everybody on his team knows that he has still got the arm. So they're giving it to him. He's, got, he's off to the left right now with two. Oh, no, he gave one away. All right, we have 22 minutes and 40 seconds left. It is 1-0 Grand Valley. Ben, can you get us a count, please, for Grand Valley? Ten. Ten left in. And I... 13 for Central Michigan. Grand Valley not throwing nearly as accurately as they had been. In fact, both teams are really not, not hitting the mark as far as throws go, and that's just fatigue on day Absolutely. two. Absolutely. Central Michigan still controlling that neutral zone. Grand Valley, for most of this point, has been back on its baseline. I think Central Michigan realizes they have to be the aggressor, seeing how slow it is to score a point. They have to uh, push the advantage here, make some throws, make some catches, see if they can get themselves a point. Yeah, uh, uh, and they, I mean, they know that, and they realize that this is the start of the second half. They can get a point right now, but they need that second in order to, uh, to win the game. So, yeah, they can tie it up over the course of the uh, second half, but they need two points to win. Yeah, and that was a great catch there by number 17, Aaron Terenzi, for Grand Valley. We're getting a lot of all right, for those of you just joining us, we have 20 minutes and 50 seconds left. Score is 1-0 Grand Valley. Second half, yes, we are in the second half. Who was that with the catch? That was 17 with another catch. Terenzi again? Terenzi again, yeah. Okay, thank you. Maybe they're calling that catch is off the ball, which is a dead ball, so I thought it was a, I don't know. 
No, if it's off a ball, it's just a trap. Yeah, so, so, they, so they, they did not, the, the player that went in for Grand Valley uh, just walked back off, yeah. Grand Valley more than happy to play this passive game right now. They know they can just sit back and catch. I'm definitely not seeing the same arms of uh, from Central Michigan that I am from Grand Valley, so they can just sit back, catch these balls, no problem, no issue. Ooh, That's number 36, Nordberg going down for Grand Valley. That's a big loss. Great catcher for the Lakers. And he was. He had a ball in his hand, so he went for the block instead of the catch, and then it just it just nicked his foot before it could hit it, the ball hit it. Yep. It's such a gamble. It's like a rock, paper, scissors match when someone has a ball in their hand. If you're throwing at them to block, they could actually block it. They could drop, drop it and drop catch it. And, yeah, you're just playing this game of, you know, do I throw fast enough to make a difference in, in, in this game right now. Central Michigan, though, staying aggressive. You have to respect the Chippewa strategy. They know they have got to get a point. Oh, and an attempt at a catch takes out Jacob Lesky there. That's a big loss for Central Michigan. Thankfully, he's not buried too deep in jail, so they should be able to get him back with a few catches. Oh, there's your first big headshot. That would be number three, Austin Morley, taking one to the dome right there. There was a catch by Grand Valley as well. They just sent another player in. I didn't see. So. Yeah, we, I think we were all too busy basking in the glow of that headshot to see the catch, but Grand Valley did have a catch there as well. Another catch from Terenzi, who has just turned into an animal this game with the catching. Harpin, 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 I don't remember his name. Oh, Hadwig. Hadwin. Yeah, Hadwin. Brett, Brett Hadwin. Started H into the name. Hedwig, uh, Harpring. In the face, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> just one throw from Central Michigan. You can hear the captain calling out, just one throw. Charles Hess, though, number 10 for Central Michigan, though, going out on that shot to the foot. Eleven players for who? For Grand Valley, eight. So eleven for Grand Valley, eight for Central Michigan. Down to ten now. Down to ten. Okay. Seventeen thirty left in the second half. Grand Valley leading one nothing. Quality over quantity. Unfortunately, it's Grand Valley, so you can't. You gotta have quality. Exactly. Eight. Kevin Bailey directing his troops, group throw from the left side, and that's exactly what he gets. To no avail, but yeah, they got it. Kevin Bailey does Get need Kevin a ball. Get Kevin a ball. 28, yeah, Klopsik going off for Grand Valley. And Bailey with two balls. He's he's going to dominate this game. He still has an arm, plain and simple. He's off to the right right now. And he's your captain. You expect your leaders to step up when it matters. And right now, Grand Valley needs to take this second point and put this game out of reach for the Chippewas. For any of you out there watching in viewership land, tell us what your experiences are with either of these teams. Any insight that you can share with this, uh, with us on this game, we'd be happy to share on the broadcast. You know, we're just three guys. If any of you have played against these teams, as a ooh, devastating ooh, headshot right there ooh, 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 takes out up. number seven for Central he's up, he's Michigan. Up. That would be uh, Zach Bachner going down there for Central Michigan. A really nasty headshot. So. 
If you have some insight on this game, please share it on the, uh, in the chat here with live stream. We'll be happy to uh, mention that here on the broadcast. 15-20 left in the second half. Grand Valley still up 1-0. I count seven Chippewas left in versus what looks to be nine, nine Grand Valley, yeah. So a nine to seven man advantage for Grand Valley right now. We, we weren't able to catch you actually through that ball. Yeah. That's two of my, probably my two MVPs for uh, Grand Valley are number four and number five, Bailey and DeYoung. Uh, the previous game that we cast with them, they turned around. It was just the two of them in, and they managed to turn around to a win. It was unbelievable. I would also nominate Nordberg to be in that discussion with the amount of catches that he's had so far, but you can't go wrong. Bailey's been leading his troops like a champ. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, gentlemen. Central Michigan, 14 minutes left, still has a chance to take a point, but they have got to get busy with some catches right now. Nine Grand Valley players still in this game. So still a nine to seven man advantage. Ooh, there it is, chipping away, number seven. No, 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 that was not a catch. No. No, that was, you. that was yeah, he's out. Number seven, Sherman, going out there. The calls. He knew very well that he dropped that ball. He was just hoping the ref. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like that. That's, I don't like it. skeevy. Skeevy, I don't like it. A little questionable. Unfortunately, we don't have that. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the chat, Ryan, man. Thank you very much for that comment. Unfortunately, we don't have instant replay. We can't, we can't look at that and yes. see like, oh, yeah, he knew. I mean, there are plenty of times in a football play where you, they just they think they catch it, they don't, and they look and they see it hits the ground first. We don't have that option. We do the best we can. That's right. We have our eyes. For what it's worth, uh, this is from Patrick Delling in the chat. For what it's worth, DeYoung is the last person I'd want to take one to – Take one to the face from, he throws a heavy ball out of context. That's amazing. <laughs> a heavy ball, I like that. I feel like that might be one of those balls where it kind of flattens out. It's moving so fast. Pro tip, don't get in the way of Bailey and his target from Nathan Ward. Good to know as well. Yeah, Kevin Bailey still, still with a live arm. Yeah, we got a timeout right now. So this is a great chance for us to think. We have 40 viewers. This is the first time we've done this. And uh, I'm already impressed by the number of people tuning in. So thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, please feel free to use the chat. We would love to hear from as many people as possible. Gives us something to talk about. Yes, it does. 12.52 uh, left in this second half. I believe before we went to break, it was maybe an 8-7 to seven advantage for Grand Valley since Sherman went off. Something along those lines. We'll count for you guys when we get back to live action here. That's six. Someone did get hit. Someone got hit for Central Michigan. Uh-oh, boys. All right, so we have, six looks like versus six versus eight. Where's yes. our admins monitoring this chat? <laughs> Sorry to take you to Super 8 there for just a second. And now night shot. <laughs> no night vision. Yes, it is. We apologize for the brief night vision you saw there. If you want it, we can put it into antique mode. I don't think anyone wants those Instagram filters on this live stream. Bailey. Oh my goodness. I really don't know if that hit the ball, but the ref was right there, so he's going to see better than me. It kind of sounded like, that's what I go from really, yeah, the sound. You can tell the difference when it hits a ball or when it hits 
somebody. Switch it to antique and do the whole broadcast that way. Like, oh, I haven't seen anyone armed like this since Tripoli. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> that nerd comment brought to you by. So tired. <laughs> we are all going on about uh, 14 hours straight of broadcasting games here at Nationals 2015. A lot uh, of fun. Yeah, we had some sleep and some. You know, uh, we, and well, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, a nice catch there by Hillebrand. Takes out. Uh, Number zero, Mike Heller for CMU. The Chips really in trouble now that they're down on the 10 second shot clock. Sided commentary, CMU is in it also. All right, we get it, Gene. We are all Central Michigan fans here as well. But now the chips are down to four players. 15, number two, number 27, Wes Peters, and number 35, Chris Kohler. I, I don't even think that's remotely true. I think we've been praising several players on Grand Valley for their incredible catches and throws. Uh, I, it's no doubt that some of us uh, want to see a Central Michigan win because of the number of wins Grand Valley. Everybody likes to root for an underdog players and people and viewers <laughs> and audience members here. Everyone likes an underdog, that's right. That's it. That sounded like it hit ground, yeah. Zig was saying that ball hit ground, so no catch there. So left end for Central Michigan, you have Cameron Milbrot, number 15. You also have Wes Peters, number 27, and number 35, Chris Kohler. 9.35 left in this second half. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ryan. We appreciate it. Great block there by Dylan Fedick, number 24. Wes Peters very upset, arguing some kind of call. I think, I think he thought someone got hit there. Karen Gardner says, shout out to my brother and the GVSU team. Go, go, go. Ooh, heated. What just happened? Sounds like uh, maybe a dispute with the shot clock. CMU very upset right now. A non-captain is being the upset one, which is not, not going to be a good decision, to be honest. One of the captains isn't stepping in and telling him to back off. Uh-oh. Very aggressive. I think, I, think it, yeah, I think it has something to do with the shot clock. Very aggressive from CMU's captain there, though. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. We'll yeah, there's definitely it. a problem with the shot clock or yeah. the clock person either not calling it out loud enough. I don't know exactly how it's functioning. Um, but they keep saying nine. I don't know nine. if they're saying nine seconds on the shot clock. Let's see if we can find out. Hold on just a second, folks. Okay, so the complaint from Central Michigan is that the shot clock counter did not start counting out loud until nine. So that leaving the chip was only one second to throw, essentially. Uh, counters typically start counting out loud at five in order to give people five seconds. So that's, that's what the argument is right now. 8.49 left in this half. Let's be honest, that is not the issue that is losing them this game, though. So it doesn't um, it doesn't help though right no, now for no. this to become an issue. So I don't think that'll be a problem going forward. 
Uh, we'll definitely probably hear counting starting at five, six, seven. Much louder yeah. and the team will get involved, yes. Clock. There you go, clock has started. We are back underway here after the stoppage. West yelling at Felix Peroni, Felix telling him to play the game. And number 35, that would be Chris Kohler going down for Central Michigan, leaving just two Chippewas left in this game. Eight minutes, 7% battery. <laughs> It, what maybe 1% uh, per minute we will be fine. So Central Michigan has left in number 27, Wes Peters, as well as number 6, Kevin uh, Greg? Greg? Yeah, it looks like Greg. Let's go with Greg. I don't know, whatever. We'll go with Greg. Yeah, uh, we have a few people in the chat that are saying the same thing. It is a legit complaint. The issue is the, the, we put a lot of rules in place saying that only the captain is permitted to talk to officials. So having other players on the sideline, one, it kind of needlessly, you know, it stirs things up and antagonizes people. So all of those requests need to be done through the captain. And that is it. As we uh, you guys finish up remember, that discussion. Though, these people are volunteers. Every single one of the refs and the uh, the shot clock uh, people are just, they're just, they're, they're doing their players. best. Yeah, they're, they're volunteering the they their time. And, I mean, there's one way to be a constructive criticism and say, hey, start counting at five. Yeah. But to scream at them is only going to make them more upset. It's not going to help the situation at all. Yeah, so you don't want to antagonize right. the refs. Legit complaint, but a better way to go about it.